Getting on to the first topic, Benedict Cumberbatch wants men to, quote, shut up and listen in conversations about toxic masculinity. In an interview with Sky News, he said that men have a tendency to get defensive around the subject. Do you agree? I mean, I wish I could say I agree, like, oh, yeah, I'm hearing so many guys getting real defensive about this. I'm just looking for the guys talking about it in the first place, mm. to be very honest. I don't know that right off the top of my head that there's enough guys, at least in Hollywood, who are every day on the red carpet saying, you know, we got to deal with pay gaps and we got to do this because we're the guys. We, we have some power to give up here. We have some privilege to give up here. Like, where is the chorus of men? rallying around the women because we know a lot of women in the Time's Up movement are leading the charge, but where are the guys marching along with them? I, think, I, I do have to say that. I think maybe the problem partially is though that like toxic masculinity is, is a very, it's a very like strong set of words together. When you think about word toxic, it means like poisonous and it can kill you. And I think some men hear that and they are get just defensive. like- Yeah, they get defensive. And I can kind of understand a tiny bit of that, which is just like, are you saying something about my inherent sort of gender identity that I relate to is problematic on its own. And that's, I think that's a big gross misunderstanding of what people are trying to mean by it. And I think it goes a step backwards from what you were talking about with pay gap and things like that. It simply is these ideas, and we've talked about them on the show before, that some men get raised with, which is this is the only one way to be a man. You can't show emotions, you can't cry, you can't say I love you, I can't say, uh, you know, that guy looks good looking, or any of those kinds of notions about that you have to be in this tiny little box and if you stray outside of it, there will be repercussions. I think that's what people are referring to and then all of the follow So then maybe there. we have to say that Benedict Cumberbatch is one of the guys who's a role model. Like, who are the role models of men who are masculine without the toxic part? And, and Benedict has been talking about this issue for years. So I would maybe exalt him as a, a role model for men to follow. I'm just not sure about, like, you know, I agree, maybe shut up and listen at first. But then, no, no one wants to, to your shut point. Shut up and listen, though, to out of the gate, though, either. Well, Do you want to hear shut up and listen? I, yeah. Really? Yeah, well, it's, I a don't guy, it's a guy talking. Sometimes it's, guy it's talking not your guy. turn. Yeah. I don't I don't think anybody if they're being honest with themselves wants to hear shut Candy, I want you to go from here. I don't want to hear shut up and I will I'll expand on that after, but I want to hear from you. Um, I'm coming in on on the side in the defense of masculinity to a certain extent only because I was raised by what you call a man's man, my brothers and my dad. They also came up in a different time and in a different socioeconomic situation. And they had to literally fight for everything they had and fight to protect it once they had it. And I know that I had the life I had because they were there. Do they know what fork to use at a formal table? No. But they can hunt to feed me. They can give me shelter. They can defend me physically if somebody's coming at me. They can fix my motorcycle. Did they tell you they love you? They told me they love me. They, right. raised, they raised a feminist. Yes. And and they know how to cook and they know how to, how to make a cake as well. But I just worry sometimes that we that in our push to get rid of the really negative stuff, we're only going to leave room for the metrosexual because in different life circumstances, some men did have to flex and do have to flex their masculinity in a way that others maybe don't have. See, I think I hear what you're saying, that that's like, I, you know, that would be a, a one person's ideal to have like men who can do that, to do what they did for you, Candy, and also tell you they love you and show emotions, which is what Cynthia was saying, is like not one way to be masculine. I think that like there is though, an excessive amount of fear mongering about you're telling me not to be the dude's dude anymore and you're telling me like you're taking away all the things that I think that's what the concern is I think that you know however you want to be a man is great just don't make it so that that masculinity becomes aggressively toxic to other people it's I think that's the it though I think guys are having a hard time I'm not trying to make excuses for them, yeah. but what is the difference for some men between toxic masculinity and masculinity? Mm -hmm. Like when I'm hearing you talk, Candy, and I hear about that, I hear, okay, maybe stereotypically masculine traits, if I can use, I know this is the time where I'm like, okay, yeah. let's figure out our language. But are all men understanding that what is 
toxic masculinity no, versus a PR problem. You know, like I masculinity. Think I think people I think are no, taking, and, and I don't think we or people who are talking about it have done a great job of explaining it either. And I think we know it when we see it. Here's what I'll say. I know uh, when I see it, and I actually I think I'm more gracious. I will say in my personal life, Jason and I will be watching TV or talking about something during the Times Up Me Too, you know, movement. We talked a lot, and he was less gracious than I was. He would often say that guy is a what for whatever words I can't say on daytime television. And I would say, well, what about this? And he would say, no, 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 that guy is toxic. That guy is problematic. That guy is whatever. And I, so I think, I do think there are men out there who recognize it also in each other. And maybe what we're looking for is for more of them to say, hey, dude, when you're talking about women that way at this bar or when you're going and, yeah. you know, doing this type of behavior, that's unacceptable. Well, I think that that is the second part, the afterwards of shut up and listen. At first, figure it out, find out what it is, but then you have to participate in the conversation to engage other men, Benedict Cumberbatch, in what the conversation is. I'm not sure that it has a branding problem. Like, as you said, we all know it when we see it. Go to the stands of any sporting event, you will see to toxic masculinity, no problem. You will hear it, you will see it, it will be fully on is display. Is that toxic, though? It is 100% well, 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 toxic. Wait, again, okay, but I don't know if it's it toxic. Is, that crosses the line. When you are calling out players, stop playing like a girl, that is yeah, toxic. Well, and I agree. guarantee you, you go to any hockey game and you will hear that as many times as you hear the whistle. But here's the thing. I think what Benedict might be saying, I don't know, is guys have to be willing to be uncomfortable in a discussion. And I think the first part is shut your mouth. Don't, why are you always trying to defend yourself? How about this? Listen. Even if you feel like you're being attacked, it's the same thing we're all asking of each other in racial discussions. By definition, if you are being asked to change, the first part is you're going to get uncomfortable. And I think Benedict is calling out other guys. Let's be willing to get uncomfortable even feeling like you might be personally attacked so that otherwise, if you're just going to defend, how are you going to be able to hear what are the changes you may or may not? You might be totally good, probably not, but you might be totally good. How do you know if you're yeah. not listening in the conversation? Oh, I'm listening to you. I'm listening yeah. to this conversation. Yeah. I hope people at home are listening. There's so much more to say on that, but we're going to move. <laughs>